Brother High doesn't understand who the hero thinks he is. The man thinks he doesn't deserve it. Excuse me. He even begins to threaten, wanting to know what he is doing. Yi Cheng prescribes to him, a slap in the face, asking if he'd let him talk. The hero is even willing to give an explanation. However, first of all, the goon will say everything, otherwise he will kill him. The richest man grabs the hero by the other hand, counting that the immortal had gone mad. He urges him to think better of it, because Brother High is a reliable partner. Brother Hu and the latter had thousands under him. The reborn one is a little surprised by this, A. Eh? Then they are surrounded by a crowd that has come to the call of their leader. One of them stated that the one who, if he dares to bark at Brother High, he won't come out in one piece. Xiaoming notices that Yi Chen has gotten them into a lot of trouble. After that, it says it's him. This is not involved, so the guy should decide this issue himself. The rich man turns to Chairman Wang, noting that he couldn't talk some sense into this guy, but he doesn't have any. His attitude to what is happening, so he asks to be given the opportunity to just leave. The fat man, he says emphatically that no one will leave here today. Lin Zhu suggests that she just, I stayed, because otherwise none of them will be able to get out of here tonight. The guy notices that. The girl should not worry, because he already said that nothing will happen to her. After these, finally, Yi Chen tightens his grip on Brother Hai's throat. The immortal calls to let the girls go first, and if someone gets in their way, then he will. Send him to the lords of the underworld. The man through wheezing asks subordinates to let go. Girls, the fat man also agrees, giving the beauties permission to leave. Xiaoming breaks down too. Exit first. Lin Zhu's friend grabs her, urging her to go. The same believes that they should not, leaving Yi Chen behind just like that. The hero also asks them to go, noting that he will come a little later. Her friend drags the blonde with her, and the blonde tries to stop her, not wanting to leave Yi Chen. When all the friends leave and the guy remains in the crowd of enemies, he lets go of Brother High, abandoning him. On the floor, the fat man runs up to him, asking if he's okay. The man clears his throat, claiming that he has now started to respect the guy, so he encourages him to say what he wants. Dai. Yi Cheng recalls that Zhu Xiaoming said that their boss is Brother Hu, so he clarifies if it's about. About Chu and Hu. Brother Hai asks if he has heard his older brother's name and if he is scared. By this, the brunette pulls out his phone, noting that it's a coincidence that he knows Chu and Hu personally. So he suggests making a phone call to make sure that he and Brother Hu are the same person. The same person, Chairman Wang gets angry, asking who he is to know Brother Hu personally. And if he tries to ask for help, Immortal ignores these questions by calling. To a friend, the same person immediately recognizes Master Yi, asking if there is any assignment for him. Hero gives a negative answer, saying that one person named Zhao Hai said he wanted it. Deaf and, apparently, he is a subordinate of the interlocutor, who wonders where that comes from. So much nerve. He politely asks Master Yi to let him talk to him. The hero holds out his phone towards Zhao Hai. A familiar voice starts scolding him, on the phone, saying that Tom should stop fooling around, because Master Yi is not the person he wants to be. He can be provoked. After that, he asks where he is now. The bald thug. He is surprised, because he recognizes Brother Hu's voice, so he quickly replies that he is in the dynasty of Rome. KTV. Chu and Hu notes that everyone should stay put, because he is coming right now. Chairman, Wang decides to ask how you know Brother Hu. Brother Hai assumes that he has hired new ones. People, Brother Hai puts his hand on the hero's shoulder, saying that he means he is their new brother, so that he will be able to help them. I should have mentioned it earlier. He reveals that he and Brother Hu have known each other for a long time, so he, she can call him Brother Hai. The man notes that he will forget about what happened today, but he should still apologize profusely. Yi Cheng replies that if that's all, he probably will play their own game with them. Brother Hu runs into the karaoke room, apologizing to Master Yi for being late. Picture, presented before his eyes, causes shock. Several dozen people are lying in the hospital. Outage, Chairman Wang and Brother Hai are sitting on their fifths, almost crying in frustration. The hero stands above them. Two grown men, who have been building themselves up as gangsters before, beg Brother Hu to save them. The same one nervously asks what they did to Master Yi the latter tells what he has. There are relatives here, and they've assigned him to take care of their daughter, but some people think they can't. Defame her and even wish me dead. After that, the guy decides to get an opinion. Ask the other person how they should react to this. The fat man grabs the bandit's hand, admitting his guilt and asking for forgiveness, however they were. We've been with him for 20 years, so he can't just leave him here. Brother who wants to. 
turn to the hero, but he puts his hand on his shoulder, saying that there is no hurry, because he gives one night for everything and hope that by tomorrow morning he will say that he is already dead, otherwise, he will die. The man realizes that Zhao Hai and Wang Zhongxin are now dead. As soon as the immortal comes out of the karaoke room, Lin Zhu runs out to meet him, asking if he's going to go to a party, whether he's okay. The guy says he's fine, but he doesn't understand why she's still there. Here, although she should have left first, and also where the rest of the girl's classmates are. Blonde, she lowers her head, remembering how Xiaom and hung all the dogs on her, saying that she became a dog. The reason for all this, so she doesn't have to play the victim. Events are moved to. A few minutes ago, Lin Zhu says that if Xiaoming doesn't want to help, then don't. However, he also has no right to accuse someone else. The guy stands his ground, doesn't. Knowing he'd said the wrong thing, because she and her idiot roommate had tripled that number. A huge mess. The rich man reminds that he was almost done consoling Boss Wang and Brother Hai's anger, but Yi Chen gave his brother. I get another slap in the face. Thus, the guy was just humiliated like that, so the guy's actions infuriate him. Xiaomin doesn't understand who he thinks he is, so he definitely deserves to die. The blonde prescribes a sharp slap to the rich man, saying that she really was wrong on the phone his account, so he should leave if he doesn't want to help. Rubbing his cheek, the guy says that. He's leaving and he won't bother her if she wants to die with this jerk so badly. A friend of mine. He notices that there's no point in staying here any longer, so she suggests we leave. Lin Zhu. She claims that she can't leave because Yi Chen saved her, so she should stay here and wait for it. Mentally, she asks that the guy be okay. The blonde does not tell what really happened, saying that her classmates had business, so they left. Yi Cheng suggests that we go, because he will walk her home. These words. They are surprised by the interlocutor, and she asks if they are definitely going home, if everything is settled, and what. It happened to that brother Hai. The guy asks her not to worry, because they will no longer be hers. Bother. Lin Zia is amazed that the neighbor managed to settle scores with the one who scared him so much. Su Xiaoming. The girl recalls that she saw him hanging out with all these gangsters. She even suggests that he might be one of them. Beauty decides to accept it as, of course, Yi Chen had saved her after all. Hint Wang thanks the guy for seeing the girl off to the house. The same person notices that the woman is too polite. Auntie remembers that they are all family, so there's no need to be so formal. My uncle replies that this is not the case. It will go, because they still have to thank the guy, because he helped her with homework. And he was accompanying her, and it must have been exhausting, so the man decides that. Next time, he would treat him to a delicious meal. Yi Chen notices that it's too late, so he should go home. He wishes Auntie Wang. Good night. The same one asks him to be careful on the way back. Lin Zhu mentally thanks the guy for tonight. As soon as the hero moves away from the apartment, a relative, he picks up the phone. Chan Hu informs him that the punishment has been meted out. However, Zhao Hai is dead, and Wang Zhongxin has lost an arm and a leg. The immortal calls. Who next time? It's better to keep an eye on your subordinates so that they don't let themselves get carried away. Barking everywhere, the bandit asks Master Yi not to worry, because he will make sure that. Teach them a lesson. As soon as the conversation ends, Chan Hu notices what he was saying to him. I don't want him to do anything stupid, but he probably doesn't care if he provoked Mr. Yi. The man says that Wang Zhongxin is lucky to be alive, if Mr. Yi really did. If he was angry, then even he would be dead already. The fat man declares that he won't do it again, what to do, and that he realized his mistake. Brother who says that if this happens again, he will be sent to you. You should just apologize for being alive. Mentally, the complete bandit notices that his old life cannot be returned. But with the life of Yi Chen, it will also be finished. The hero recalls that when he was studying with Lin Zhu, he heard how Aunt Wang had mentioned money, so he needed to think of a way to help her. He dials Chen, Pinya, thinking that he might be able to help. Dr. Lu asks if Master Yi needs it. The same, I wanted to ask him if there were any patients in Jiangnan with difficult to treat diseases, and if they were. If you are willing to pay, then it can help them. The interlocutor understands that the master needs money, so he notices that he can just tell him, and he will send them to him right now. Hero, he replies that if he needed his money, he would have said so. The doctor apologizes, admitting that I went too far, and then he tells me that there is one such person. This, quite a prominent figure in the Mafia world, but half a month ago something happened and he was hard up, wounded. He tried every hospital and doctor he could find, but none of it worked. It helped. Yi Chen wants to know more details. The hero takes a taxi and drives to a mansion. It is followed by a car in which, located in Yuxian Hao, 
To the latter, the man who got out of the car looked familiar, so he asks if it's Ichen. The girl is surprised by this, because the brunette came here for. The taxi is so late, so she wonders why. When the headlights illuminate the immortal, then the couple recognizes him. Yuxi immediately asks why he is here. It assumes that the, I decided to annoy her even after bothering her in the company, and now I decided to follow. Follow her. The girl also assumes that the guy has already spent all the money she gave him. The Chu family, so he came to see her, remembering how merciful she was. Hero in silence. He goes to the window of the car, and Yuxi doesn't let up, noting that this is not the right place to go, just to come here like that. But she didn't think he could afford to spend even a day here even in the cheapest villa in this place. After that, the girl points at the Porsche, saying that it's a gift from her cute hubby, Yuan Hao, and then she asks if he can afford it. To Lao, Yi Chen begs for forgiveness, showing the golden card in his hand and saying that he really is. Lives here, Yuxi pulls out his silver card, saying that Tom shouldn't think that he is the only one who has lost his job. He can trick her with this random card. She encourages him to take a look at her key card from the villas are on the mountain of the ever-sleeping dragon, so he can't even pretend, because it doesn't exist. You'll deceive me. Hao's face changes to one of utter disbelief. The reborn one decides. Do not answer this question yourself, saying that the girl should ask you and how, which knows the answer to why its map looks different. Yuxi turns to the blonde man. To clarify, Yi Chen's fake key card. The guy begins to tell that everything on the mountain is eternal. Sleeping Dragon has 88 villas, and all the key cards are different from each other, and the one that it was in her hand, from villa number 88, while in Yi Chen's hand, the golden card that belongs to villa number 1. Yuxi freezes in amazement, not knowing what to do, immediately believing in it, because what is happening is like a joke. The girl mentally notes that only those, those with the most power have the right to live on the ever-sleeping Dragon Mountain, so... Even villa number 88, owned by Yuan Hao, was bought three times over. More expensive, with the help of his father pulling the strings, so that the beauties are completely unclear how to eat. Chen can live in the most expensive and luxurious villa. Then the girl remembers that this mountain of the ever-sleeping dragon is the property of the Chu family. So they probably lent the guy this place as a token of gratitude. Hao agrees with. By this inference, Yuxi exhales languidly, noticing that she has already said that he didn't have. There would be opportunities to do this, relying only on yourself. She steps on the gas and into the next. Moment crashes into a tree. Yi Chen also realizes that there is still time, so he leaves them. Two of them to have fun. Two days pass. The doctor meets the hero, offering to get in the car. He acts like a chauffeur. The actress also asks the guy to be careful and wishes a successful working day. The same person notices that it's been a few years since that incident, so he's already starting to wonder when she'll be back. He can go back to his home. The man also notes that he is here to pick him up for a meeting with the patient I mentioned a couple of days ago. Then a few appear next to them. People in black. The commander of the rank B mercenary team of the Zhao Qingdai Mercenary Alliance. Beauty. He introduces himself by saying that they need to know something, so she hopes he can collaborate with them. The doctor is surprised by this development of events, and the hero decides to find out if he knows them. It turns out that the Mercenary Alliance is a private organization made up of a group of trained people. Mercenaries, they can help solve almost any problem, if you have them with you. Bloody, the Mercenary Alliance's strength had grown so much in recent years that it attracted a lot of attention. Attention of senior officials. They intend to recruit them, so they give them a lot of tasks. The doctor also says that there are rumors that if the higher ranks cannot solve something directly, then they do it secretly. Yi Cheng decides to find out what they need from him. Girl reports that a horrific case of serial abduction and murder has recently occurred, victims of which were very young boys, and their source told them that he has his attitude to the case, so she hoped for his cooperation. The immortal decides, ask them where this source came from and if they suspect he's the killer. The doctor states that, this is ridiculous, and then he asks them if they know who Master Yi is, and he doesn't know why either. They suspect him, out of the blue. A representative of the fair sex notes that the killer, whether or not it didn't matter, because he still had to go with them. She wants to take the hero by the hand and drag him along, but he won't let you do it. The reborn man seizes the beautiful woman's hand and rings it behind her back, claiming that they have not enough qualifications to send him for questioning. The girl is amazed. Yi Chen's speed. The boys rush off, calling for vice leader Zhao to be released. They want to help them, but the girl orders them to stop. 
she notices that there's no point in grabbing her. After all, if he is really innocent, he should go with them and make it clear, but even if, they'll leave today, but they'll still come back another time, and it won't be so gentle next time. The brunette also encourages them to try, because he does not mind at all. The doctor decides to intervene in this case. Conflict, considering that there was some misunderstanding, he introduces himself and notes that, the girl should definitely know him, after which Chen Ping gives her his word of honor that Master Yi is accurate, not a killer. He asks you to check your source again, because it could be wrong. Girl, I am mentally amazed that the master of traditional Chinese medicine, Chen Pin, is really a master of traditional Chinese medicine. He trusts this young man. The man says that if the girl does not believe him, then he will. He can call the head of the Chu family, Chu Tianlong, because the man is sure that he would do the same. The most important thing for Master Yi, Vice Head Zhao cringes when it comes to the head of the Chu family. This is the case, a new level, and the representative of the fair sex herself asks a simple question, and who? This is the kind of guy that Dr. Chen and the head of the Chu family are willing to help him. The girl asks for her own, a subordinate, Xiao Lai, bring her a laptop and show her that video. Reborn Let's Go, a girl who says that she will show them the video that the source provided them with. The hero is the same, warns that the girl should not touch it again without irrefutable evidence. No proof, because if he didn't, he'd break her arm. The girl mentally notes that the guy, very strong. Dr. Chen also asks Master Yi to calm down. The vice head of Zhao notes that he, he is young but very experienced, and Dr. Chen is very polite to him. But the name Yi Chen does not cause her any concern. No emotion. The beauty decides that it is better to find out more about it. A person. The girl shows them the same video. It shows a man dressed as Yi Chen and having such a beautiful face. Kerdu, walking down the street, holding the child's hand. The brunette says that there is something wrong with their video. Not so. For four days ago, at this time, he was attending the Chu family's banquet in the Moon Palace. This, surprising the girl, however, Dr. Chen states that he was there and can testify, as well as everyone who was at the banquet that day. Vice President Zhao asks Mr. Chen to give her a guest list, those who were present at the banquet that day, because they need to check again. The man says that this is not a problem at all, but he will have to contact the Chu family. The girl asks that Yi Cheng continue to cooperate with the investigation for some time, until they won't make sure there aren't any problems. The reborn one agrees. Beauty brings her own changes, because after checking it turned out that he really was at that time in the Palace of the Moon, and he's innocent. She admits that there is most likely a problem with their source, so they'll come back and check again. The hero also clarifies whether they can tell the person's name. Who provided the video a representative of the fair sex responds that this is not conforms to their rules the guy also notices that the person who sent them the video is clearly she tries to frame him and he thinks it's wise to find out who the person is also if it is if you intentionally provided false information then this person will not be trustworthy and they will not be able to find out what they are doing most likely, they will no longer work together. The girl freezes, realizing that the interlocutor. That's right. Vice leader Zhao wants to say something else, but her subordinate interrupts. It flies up to, nay, shouting something about another one. The girl calmly asks what happened, and the man asks what happened. Says that the body of the fifth missing boy was only found in the southern district, and on the there was no evidence left at the crime scene other than a piece of paper. Beauty swears. After all, she thought that this time she would make it. Only the hero assumes that there was used. Paper talisman. The girl passes a piece of paper with the person's name and details on it. But, they need to hurry, because they have a case that they need to deal with, so she won't. Take up his time. Yi Chen reads the piece of paper, understanding who it is and why it was necessary. He asks for Chen Ping. Tell this patient that they will go to see him tomorrow because he has business to attend to. Take care of it right now. At this time, Chairman Wang is sitting at a computer desk and leading a conversation. Talking to someone on the phone, he asks how they work, because she was told that they are not working properly. The video was reliable, but it quickly turned out to be a fake. Man, swearing, because now not only was Yi Chen not beaten up, but he also lost the trust of the mercenary alliance. He decides to think of another way to get rid of Yi Chen. He also understands that he needs to. You need to hurry, because if the guy reacts, he will definitely take revenge. There's a vote for. He approves of the fat man's point. The hero stands behind the glass on the roof of the building, thanks to Van, Ronxin for reminding him. 